Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 70. We're after the resurrection and stuff is happening and we need to hear all about it. We're going to read in the Gospel of John about Jesus appearing to the disciples. This is John chapter 20 and it is the first day of the week. That is the Sabbath, Sunday. It is the day he resurrected. And today's title is The Disciples Get a Job and They Get a Benefit Package. And we'll talk a lot about the benefit package here in a second. Here we go. This is verse 19 of John chapter 20. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold the forgiveness from any, it is withheld. That's it. So here we start with the disciples on Resurrection Sunday. This is later. This is in the evening. They're still afraid. After announcements from Mary Magdalene and the other women and from Peter and John, they're still locked up behind closed doors and afraid. And probably rightly so. This was... They weren't afraid of the Romans. They were afraid of the Jews because the Jews kind of got all this started. So Jesus comes and gives them a double peace. First, he says, peace be with you. And then they started to be glad. Then he says, peace be with you again. And then he gives them a job. Here's the job. So all four Gospels have a commission. And this is the one in the book of John. It's only one sentence long. In Matthew and Mark, it's quite a bit uh, longer. The Great Commission, as you may be familiar with, Matthew 28. But here it is in John. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. So here's the job of every believer. Every The job of every believer is to go do something, to go to the borderline, or maybe even go over the borderline, at least go to the edge, find someone who's not in the kingdom, try to bring him in, try to expand the borders of kingdoms to engulf this, this next person or a next group of people and to blob them into an ever-expanding uh, kingdom. We have no qualifications to do this, as Second Corinthians chapter 3. It's only God that does this. Let me read this. This is cool. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. So this is talking about our, our ability to be a minister of the gospel. And it says, Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not to the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And we'll we'll talk about what the Spirit gives us. So it talks about, well, what job qualifications do we have? How are we sufficient to do this job? Absolutely nothing, absent the benefit package he's going to give us here with the Spirit. Our sufficiency is from God, not that we're sufficient from ourselves. He is the one that's made us competent, how? Through the Spirit. So then he's going to tell us about that. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So he's giving us sort of an an impossible job, which is to bring people into a spiritual kingdom from an earthly kingdom. We can't do that. We have to be faithful to our part of the job. He's he's the big mover. And what what is the mover inside of us? What what does he give us as our benefit package? And that's the Holy Spirit. So this is kind of like a prelude to the, there's a big uh, Pentecost uh, Sunday uh, in Acts chapter 2 where lots of people get the Holy Spirit. This is a group, a small group of, of disciples, absent Thomas, um, and they sort of get like a, a first dose of the Holy Spirit. So about the Holy Spirit, you can't underestimate the benefit package that you get here. 
uh, when the curtain was ripped and we were given access into God, this intimacy that we get, and and then God kind of comes out and decentralizes himself so that God's location, where is God nowadays? Well, he's in the hearts and the souls of all believers. In Luke 24, we've been talking about this the last couple of days. He opens up their eyes and their minds to understand scripture. That's certainly a part of it. John 16 says the, the my favorite line almost in the whole Bible He says, it's to your advantage that I go away, that Jesus goes away from the earth. How is that possible? Well, only if he sends his helper. And that helper convicts the world with regards to sin. It guides us into all truth. Um, It declares to us things that are to come. John 14 calls him a helper, and he's with us. He's with us forever. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I will teach you all things. Um, We, Jesus is speaking about himself and the Father, probably by way of the Holy Spirit. We will come to him, the believer in her, and make our home with him and her. I mean, just a fantastic benefit package that he gives us. And then finally here, this this verse about if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. So that if... In the Holy Spirit, we are proclaiming the gospel and people receive that gospel and get the message of forgiveness. It proclaims that those who believe will have their sins forgiven and those who don't will not. It it basically is saying that big question we've asked, what will you do about your sin? If you remedy your sin with this answer, you're going to be good. And if you don't remedy yourself with this answer, you're not going to be good. Okay, so two sets of people. One are people, maybe you're a listener, and I know we have listeners that are not believers. Thank you for being here. And if this is something like, yes, I'm not so sure about this thing about Christianity, but it's attractive to me. It's winsome to me. I I want to participate in this. I desire with this. I want forgiveness of my sins because I can't do anything. I want to be empowered in this way. Welcome to the kingdom. Pray to receive him. Come on, make a step of faith. And for those those of you that are in the kingdom, two things. Don't forget your job, which is to go to the borders and, and proclaim him. And then secondly, don't forget your benefit package. Without that, we're just done. Without the Holy Spirit, we're absolutely done. Because what what we're asking is for a spiritual process to take place in these people, which is impossible without the Spirit. So thank you for listening. Those of you who don't have this, continue to desire it. Those who that do have this, get busy, enact your benefit package, and go to the edge of the kingdom. Thanks for listening.